we will now talk about working of human eye we have seen the structure of human eye in detail we have also understood the structure of retina now how does the entire eye work it works like a photographic camera but when it is working as photographic camera there are certain structures which are act as tiny lenses and refract the light and which is focused on the retina so here conjunctiva cornea aqueous humor lens and vitreous humor all act as tiny lenses and refract the light to retina now all this light is focused on retina maximum refraction is done by cornea so cornea is responsible for maximum refraction all others are also helping but cornea plays the major role there is one more thing that is pupil this pupil it acts as a diaphragm and it regulates how much light is going to enter into the eye and must fall on the retina this pupil is that space in between that iris part so what exactly is this structure if we see that this is the iridal part here the ciliary body this is the iridal part ciliary body so this opening this gap is pupil if we see it from uh, the front it appears like a circular opening and in this iridal part there are two types of muscles some muscles which are circular muscles they are called sphincter muscles they are circular and there are few muscles which are called dilator muscles these are radial muscles so these radial muscles are arranged radially the ones which we have drawn in green these are radial muscles and the red ones which are the circular ones they are called the sphincter or circular muscles now when circular muscles or sphincter muscles contract when all these muscles are going to contract this entire opening is going to become narrower we call it constriction of the pupil so con uh, contraction of sphincter muscle would result into constriction of pupil this would constrict the pupil whereas the radial muscles which are actually dilator muscles when they contract their contraction is going to be towards like this they would contract like this so when they contract this opening is going to get wider so their contraction results in dilatation of pupil so pupil is going to dilate when dilatation of pupil it is going to dilate when the intensity of light is less so this opening gets wider so that more and more light can fall on retina when the intensity is more that is the time when the sphincter muscles or circular muscles contract their contraction results into constriction of the pupil the pupil becomes narrower so that less and less light falls on the retina because intensity of light is more now we can understand this by taking an example and this movement or this uh, dilatation or constriction of pupil it takes little time suppose we are sitting in a dark room watching a movie say in a theater there is absolute darkness we are just focusing on that screen and suddenly we get up from that room and come out into a bright room we feel that there is too much of brightness and we prefer closing our eyelids so that less light goes in after some time 
when the pupil has constricted we feel comfortable in that illuminated room also now reverse from a brightly lit room if we suddenly get into a dark room for few seconds we are absolutely blind we don't see anything reason when we were in bright room the pupil was very very narrow constricted now suddenly we have gone into a dark room where there is absolutely no light now pupil is going to take some time to dilate because these muscles are going to contract the pupil is going to dilate and in that dark room that less intensity light or feeble light when that starts falling on our retina then we start seeing something after a period of time so constriction and dilatation of pupil it requires a little time and this is basically how much of light should enter into our eye now this is one part so pupil it acts as a diaphragm which regulates the entry of light it acts as diaphragm and its function is regulation of light entering in bright light the pupil will be constricted and in less intensity light or dim light pupil will be dilated and this is controlled by the muscles of the iris this iris muscle these muscles which are here in the iris part those are responsible for this so there are structures which are letting the light refract fall on retina the pupil is acting as a diaphragm through which the light enters and we also know that there is a screen on which the image is formed so retina it acts as the photographic film or the screen so it is the film or the screen on which the image is formed now let us quickly uh, see how this image formation takes place and after that then we'll come to the power of accommodation suppose we draw this small diagram of the eye and here we are not talking about all the layers and everything we are just focusing on the image formation the lens is here suspended by this ligament now when the object is seen when we see the object the object is upright in front of us the rays coming from these object they come to this lens and they focus on the retina now here the image would be formed this image is smaller in size this image is a real image it is smaller as compared to the object and it is inverted the image which is formed is upside down now the information because here when light falls on this the cells they get stimulated and this stimulus is taken to the brain so now this stimulus is going to go to brain and what is happening in the brain in the occipital lobe in the cortex of occipital lobe of cerebral hemisphere interpretation of this stimulus is going to take place interpretation now when we talk of interpretation that is the time when this image is corrected it comes to actual size it becomes upright and that analysis part is done here so when light rays fall on retina that is coming on the screen the cell the cells that is rod cells cone cells they get stimulated and impulse is generated and the image which is formed here is smaller real image and it is inverted now this stimulus is taken to the brain where the correction is done that means it becomes upright in interpretation form so the object which we see is seen as the erect object of the actual size so this is how the image formation takes place now there are two more things which we need to understand when we talk of working of eye one is the various muscles which help in the movement of the eyeball and
and second is the power of accommodation. 